Hey there guys. Today I thought I'd walk you through the setup on my Old Town Salty 120 PDL. Now this is the setup I use 90% of the time for those fisheries like uh, trolling for salmon, trout, and walleye. And I also use variations of this setup for when I'm going offshore as well. So let's take a look at this kayak. It's one of my favorite kayaks um, that are currently on the market. Not only because I think it's a great value, but it's very versatile. It's very simple and efficient in that way. And it's also one of the fastest pedal drives on the market, which I love about it too. All right, let's start at the bow and we'll work our way back. Okay, so the mods I've made on this kayak are pretty simple. Uh, I've done nothing to the bow. Uh, I don't really want to do anything here or add any other hatches. I like that water can break over this and it's nice and clean. It's going to keep it dry. You know, I never use the hatch on the front of most of my kayaks in the past. And this just eliminates it and also eliminates a source of water getting into the kayak. Now, one of the first mods I did make is I changed out uh, the pedals on my PDL drive to something a little more grippier. I never go barefoot here, so it's only warm enough for like two months out of the year. Uh, but this helps lock in my shoes there a lot better, and uh, I don't get any slippage. So I'm really glad I did that. Now, there's a lot going on on this gear track, and I really heavily rely on gear tracks because I don't want to do a lot of drilling. Uh, so I use these dual T-bolt spline bases from ram now there's a lot of people changing out the standard uh, plastic gear track on the old town sportsman's lineup for these metal machined aluminum gear tracks they're like a hundred dollars a piece because they're having their rods uh, flip out of them or they're getting a lot of wiggle in their uh, heavy fish finders because people are running eight nine ten inch screens now on kayaks uh, but if you have these dual T-bolt uh, bases, you'll never have that problem. Like, if you just get the right base, you don't need to spend $200 upgrading your gear track unless you just want it to look really rad because it's aluminum um, or steel. I think that the plastic is just fine. I've caught many, many kings on these plastic gear tracks. And if you know how to dial in your drag and you use these dual T-bolt spline bases, then you really shouldn't have any issues. They just lock in really easy like that. So on this side, I just have the exact same setup. Um, just one rod holder. So this would be on my right side if I'm sitting in my kayak. I don't need anything here. On the left side, I've got this one here actually for my camera boom, which I run this one fairly far forward uh, just so that I can push the camera away from me and get the whole kayak in there. And then on this dual spline, I got a lot going on here. So we're going to pull this apart just so you can see what's going on. So we've got this Ram HD rod holder here. So when you buy this, you get this head part here this spline then that locks into this dual t-bolt base right here okay i'll put links to all these and then you can buy this extension arm here right so this part here so basically you get tons of points of adjustability you can adjust the angle of the head here you can adjust it here you can adjust it here you can adjust which direction it's pointing using these teeth here and it all locks in with a button it just releases right there otherwise it won't come out and that all goes down to the base where you can adjust there as well with teeth. So there's a lot of points of adjustability that make this really easy to customize to the exact angles that you want for your kayak. It has a locking ring. It's got some other features which I'm going to go over here in just a sec, but I want to clear this one out first. So let's go ahead and push this down. There's a little tooth that allows it to come out. So what I've done here is I've actually incorporated two ram balls and to mount my entire fish finder setup off the side of the kayak here. But I've replaced these knobs with a size C ball that goes up to a ram arm, which goes to a ram mount to my Helix 7. So this allows me to adjust, you know, I can bring this in closer to the seat. I can change the angle of the screen depending on glare that day so I can see my screen. It's very close to the seat. 
but out of the way for pedaling and I can reach it easily from my chair. Uh, and then I use an over the rail transducer arm and you might wonder why don't I use the built-in transducer mount which is actually up in here. If you guys can see that. I don't use that because I car top and then uh, it would just get ripped off eventually uh, because I'd be banging it on my loading bar. You can see right here, this is where the transducer would be. And obviously if I had it here and resting on it, it would be destroying my transducer. So I don't really like Old Town's transducer mount. I think it's kind of a poor design. It's not recessed enough to protect it. Um, I wish they would have done something like a plate like Hobie had. So I don't use it. Um, the other nice thing about an over the side uh, transducer is I can move this between kayaks in an instant. And the other thing that uh, is nice is that it's protected from damage. So if I hit something, it's just going to rotate up and out of the way depending on how much tension I have on the screws here. And additionally, if I'm running a downrigger and I can't see my downrigger ball, I can always adjust the angle custom and have this shoot at uh, an angle more acute to the stern. And that'll let me see my downrigger ball. Obviously the depths will not be accurate, but at least I can see my downrigger ball in relation to where I'm marking fish. The nice thing about all this is that it's really easy to take off. So I can unplug my helix here and we'll go ahead and take off the helix head unit. I'll just see the setup here. Okay, so there's the size C ball. And then this is a size B ball on the transducer arm right there. Very simple. And what's nice is that this is now all incorporated into this dual T-bolt. So this thing is really sturdy. A lot of people complain about their heavy uh, fish finders are too wobbly on a single T-bolt. Well, this is your solution, right? You can either incorporate it into the spline like this, or you can just buy the spline ball for the correct uh, mount for your fish finder. And then you just lock it in here. Now that's solid, right? So you don't have to worry about that coming out and it's not gonna wobble. All right, so you got a nice solid mount there. Um, right now they only go up to size C. So if you're running a 10 inch screen, which there are a few folks doing that in kayaks nowadays, um, they don't have a size D spline adapter, but I did email them about that and they said they are gonna get their engineers working on that right away. The vast majority of us are gonna be able to use the size C, no issue. All right, so the power cord I do run internally. I use a Hobie through hole mount. I still feel like they have the best and easiest to install through hole mounts. When not in use, I just store it up inside the chair here. So that comes back here underneath the seat. I'll show you that. So there's the connection right there. And then what I do is I put a piece of heavy duty Velcro down on the bottom. And I put that on the bottom as well, a matching Velcro. So that when I put this down in there, that battery is not going to slide around when I'm out on the water. It's going to lock in place. It's a very simple solution. I've even forgot to take that thing out when I'm loading it and it hasn't moved off of there. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and drop the drive down in so you can see more of the cockpit. Now one of the things that kind of sucks about the Salty is it has no built-in storage in the cockpit other than underneath the seat. So I added a Burley Pro side bro. What this allows me to do is has a little bit more pocket storage here so I can throw something in here. And then I have a convenient place for my scissors and my pliers. Everything locks in there. This has come in really handy in terms of just making a little bit of storage space to throw you know lead plastics or whatever in this side pocket it has a ton of attachment screw points the walls on the inside of the salty are actually relatively thin i think that's just to help cut down the weight um, but i found that you know because this has so many screws it's really solid and actually solidifies the wall a little bit more so i really like having that addition 
and there's the Burley Pro side bro. Okay, before we go further back, I want to talk a little bit more about these rod holders. Um, just because they're such an integral part of my kayak. Um, like I said, I have these extensions so I can bring the the rod holder back to the chair. That's one of the things com people complain about a lot on the Sportsman's is that the gear tracks are too far forward. I agree. I think they should have done top loading or center loading gear tracks so that we could have mounted them, you know, another further inch, inch and a half back towards us. But I'm able to bring it back to me with this extension arm pretty well on this Ram Mounts HD rod holder. But there's another really cool feature up here on this top of this HD rod holder, and that is it has a spot for a GoPro mount. So you can lock in a GoPro mount uh, with a ball on here. Now you can mount your action camera and use this as an action camera mount to look back on you or look down on the rod while you're trolling. But for me, having this here is really awesome for another reason, and that is this here. Now I can take a Ram Mounts X grip and I can mount it on here and I have all the adjustability. If I just loosen this up, I can move it around on this ball. I can put my phone here and if I want to do, you know, a selfie with my fish for recording my fish, if I want to take some video and I can orient the camera however I want to using this ball mount. So if I want to do a vertical shot, um, all I gotta do is just orient this and I'll have vertical. So this allows me to adjust this in an infinite number of ways. And it's just really handy for being your, having an extra hand out there. You can use the voice commands to uh, take photos. So you have your hands free or you can use the timer. And it's just a really nice way to integrate a phone into your, uh, rod holder setup and you don't have to leave this up here so like if you get your fish you got it in your net and you want to just take this photo you can you know do that and then when you're done you can just take this off it's just a, a simple gopro mount right so it's super easy to take this off now it's out of the way so you can put your rod in here and then you can go back to it if you need to and i just keep this behind the seat with me it's super handy okay so let's continue back this is probably one of my favorite add-ons to the Salty is this Canon downrigger. Here I've got a six pound ball. I won't run any heavier than that. And most of the time I don't need to. I have customized this a bit. I've shortened up the boom uh, substantially. So that brings that in tighter to the kayak. So there's less of an effect on stability. And then additionally, I've changed out the cable for braid and line rather than steel cable. The reason I use braid is you get less blowback and in the event of emergency I can use my knife or scissors to cut the ball away very easily if I get snagged up on it or wrapped up in it for some reason. Okay then next I have this mounted on a aluminum plate that locks into this V-lock mechanism here which is released by this pin right down here. I can pull this pin and this whole assembly pops out. And this is super convenient because then I can just easily take off the downrigger and the downrigger mount if I don't need to have a downrigger that day. So I'll show you how I do that. So the downrigger itself is easy because it's just a push button here and that allows this to back out. There we go. Now all the tension's taken off this V-lock. And then on this V-lock here, this plate locks down in here on this pin and that you just pull that and it comes straight out. And then if I want to go back in, I just pull that pin out and then I slide this back in, it locks in. And then behind this uh, V-lock lock system, I've got a piece of HDPE plastic, which is the same thing the kayaks are made out of, inside the kayak to distribute weight all along here. This is very secure with nuts and bolts on the backside, stainless. So that's a really nice system and makes it really easy to add this V-lock. And then the final bit here is I have a Navari uh, rear handle that I've replaced. And this just allows me to run a single gear track item here on this. And that's where I put my safety flag and light. So that's a secure way. It pushes it way back away from everything. So I'm not going to get tangled in it when I'm casting. And it makes the kayak a little bit more visible. All right, so that does it for the tour of my Old Town Salty 120 PDL. I'll put links to everything I've shown you here.
If you have any questions, just let me know. If you're rigging your own Salty or a similar kayak and you're not sure about configurations, I might know because I've, I've been on a lot of the old town kayaks as well as Hobie kayaks. Um, so if you need some help working through the problem, just let me know and I can give you the best advice that I possibly can. All right, guys, I'll see you next time on the water or here in the yard. And uh, just remember, fish smarter, not harder. Bye, guys.